R of T. I already forgot what it was. Anyone have the homework up? T cubed I minus 4TJ. T cubed I? T cubed I minus 4TJ. 4TJ, okay. Sounds like someone's name, right? Yeah, TJ hat, right? Oh, it doesn't have the hat on the TJ? TJ hat? Oh. The bold? The bold, okay. So the question is to find the derivative. This is really easy, but nothing is wrong with easy math. Easy math is the best math there is in the world because math is already hard. So solution. <laughs> so to take the derivative, you basically take the derivative of each piece, right? Okay, we'll talk about what the derivative means in the next section. It's, it's related to physics. Hey! Oh, oh you've been here, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't see you. I just. <laughs> <laughs> so, this derivative here. Oh, yeah, have we done this in this class before? We had to, have we done derivatives in this class? <gasps> this is our first derivative? Oh, yeah. oh, okay, so the power rule. Okay, so you all know how to do that? You put the 3 in the front, so we get 3t. Yeah, imagine if you didn't know that, right? So you, you subtract one, right? So like, you know, 3t squared i hat. And what's the derivative of negative 4t? Negative 4. And that's it. That's it. That's it. Easy five points, right? Easy. That's it. That's it. That's number one. We should do number two. Why not? Let's do it. Just because. What? That's it. That's it. That's it. What are, what are we finding? Just the derivative. Is that what the problem to the answer is? Yes, find the derivative. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry, find the derivative. That's what we're doing, so find the derivative. I thought it was more complex. No, 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 I told you it's all downhill or up, no, easier. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, is it uphill or downhill when it's hard? I don't know. Going downhill is easier than going uphill, but. So it's all downhill. Usually, that means you're doing that. Oh, right, right. So it's, it's a two-way. Two-way street, yeah. not a one-way street. I hate one-way streets. Four. You ever gone the wrong way on a one-way street? <laughs> Not fun. Eight. Sign T? Extra credit, Nikki. No, I'm kidding. Thank you. Thank you. You don't need the extra credit. So four cosine T, eight sine T. And again, the question uh, is, to, is, to find, is to find the derivative. Are we going to find the derivative of this? I like it when it's component form. It's good practice. So I mean, you just keep it in component, right? Yeah. Ah, you can always use the component form. Even if the question is initially in, in this IJK form, you can take it back to component form whenever you like. Totally recommended. It's been a while. We've never done it in this class. Do you all know what the derivative of cosine is? Negative sine. Negative sine. Good. You know stuff. Yes. Yes. Oh, so good. Yes. I'm, my my Calc 1 class has their first test on derivatives next week. I know. I'm, they're so good. Oh, they're so good. It's ridiculous. What's the derivative of sine? Cosine. cosine. Yeah, my Calc 1 class is ridiculous. Like, there's like 10 people who've actually done all the homework. I'm like, what? I sign a lot of homework in Calc 1. Like, a lot. That's it. Like a lot, like excessive amounts. Yeah, because I figured like if they're gonna go to Calc 2, they have to survive. So, <laughs> so I make it pretty tough. Calc like, two is a little, uh, yeah, rough. yeah. I'm like, if I, I want to make sure that if, if they get an A in my class, they're at least gonna get a B in Calc 2, right? Like I don't want them to get an A in my, you know, like, like fail Calc 2. I'm like, no. Um, we should do number three. All of a sudden, it got harder, and I don't know, and I don't want to do it. That means we should do it. So let's do it. No, just a rewriting. But I mean, I don't know how much you know, right? It's it's. it's we've never done derivatives in this class, so I, I don't know. What, you know. Oh, I know. The third test will have partial derivatives and integrals and stuff. And uh, eleven tj hat. Thank you. I always think of a of a name like tj. Like tj hat. Oh, that's TJ's brother. Okay, so solution. TJ's hat. <laughs> TJ's hat. <laughs> this derivative here. Whenever you have a fraction and you have a number up top, do you all know what what to do first? Bring the number up top, or bring the denominator up top. Bring the denominator up top. Absolutely. So let's do that first. So it's still going to be r of t. Good. Good, Dane. So let's do that first. So it's still r of t. By the way, if you do this on the test, I will let it go. Okay, no worries. Okay. So if you don't write the arrow, I'm going to let it go. I'm, I'm okay, because I'll mess up too. So hopefully that goes both ways. This is I hat. 
to us 11T J hat. I'm gonna pull out the 1 7th just to make it look a little prettier. Just to make it look a little bit better. All right, we're good to go now. Now we can take the derivative. So our prime of t. So this one, you put the negative in the front. So it'd be negative t. And what would the exponent be? Negative two. Negative two. Yeah, negative two i hat plus uh, 11 t. Its derivative would be just 11. Yeah, 11. J hat, I zoned out. Plus 2 sevenths T K hat. That's it. T K. I mean, I feel like it means something, but it doesn't. Like T K hat. Oh, like that looks cool, right? Put that on a t-shirt, like T K. You could. I'll leave it like that just out of laziness, but typically you'd bring it down. But if you left it that way, I'd mark it right. Yeah. I mean, I really want to do it, but. I won't. Should I? Uh, no, no. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, I know. This is the part where I, like, I mess up. <laughs> Kidding. No. T. T. <laughs> wow. Okay. I, you know, I, I keep thinking I should skip it, but I think we should. I think we need to do number four. Do you want to do it? Yeah. Let's it do it. Really good. Really good. It, it looks a lot harder, so we should do it probably. Let's do it, just in case. Again, I don't know. Maybe you haven't had a calculus class in like a long time. Uh, so, so R. Six cosine cubed T I hat plus four sine cubed T J hat plus K hat. Plus K hat? Hmm? Okay. Now we're, doing. now we're doing chain rule. Yeah. Now we're doing chain rule. Now we're doing the chain rule. So, yeah, you want to think of this as, as cosine, as 6 cosine t quantity. That's what it means. Yeah, Michael's right. We have to use the chain rule. Right? So we have to bring the 3 down. So let's do it. So r prime of t. So 3 times 6 is uh, 18. Cosine squared t times, what's the derivative of the inside going to be? Negative sine. Negative sine t, yep, i hat, right? Because if to multiply by the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine, so you put the 3 in the front, you get 18, subtract 1 times the derivative of the inside, that's negative sine. Everyone okay with that? It's a chain rule, right? Put the 3 in the front, because you're thinking of it like this, right? It's, it's really 18 cosine t squared times negative sine t. Yeah, that's that, another way to look at it. Okay. Everyone okay with that step? Everyone see where the negative sign came from? Okay. Same thing here, right? Except here it's going to be 12 sine squared t times cosine t, right? Cosine, because the derivative of sine is cosine t, j hat. And then there's a 1 here. What's the derivative of 1? So I'm going to put it there. Okay. Okay. I was, I was, did you do that too with the okay? Oh, I do. Every single time I think that. I'm like, okay. You know what? Let's go back to the other way that Rafael was suggesting earlier, the component form. Because that's prettier. At least I like it. I don't know. I like components. This is negative 18 cosine squared t sine t. 12 sine squared t cosine t. And then I really wanted to emphasize the last component. Zero, yeah. If you just erased it, that'd be okay too. I'd have to mark it right. It's understood that it's not there. So if you didn't write the zero, I would totally uh, let it go. Okay, so I'm going, I'm going kind of fast. I'm just trying to get as many problems as we can, but I'll pause, I'll let you catch up. So how many people have died from the coronavirus in the uh, US? Anyone know? In the U.S., I don't think anybody's died. In China, the number is now over a thousand. Wow. Yeah, oh no, it's getting really bad. Just not here. Hopefully, not ever here. But it's yeah, I know. It's way worse. China's better. Mm -hmm. I should look at the DEs and like see if I can. I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna just just for fun, just because I'm sure you can model it. 
to some extent. Like when they find the cure, the DE fails, right? So, because life is random and like you know, math is not perfect. Huh? Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's uh, <laughs> let's do. I guess we should do number six. Because I don't know if you know this, like it's, I mean I assume you do, but let me, uh, let me just refresh your memory. So number six, let's do six. I skipped five. Five, you have to rewrite it. It's got some LNs and stuff, but six, it's a new rule. So R of T, R of T. Six, did you say six? Yeah, six. this? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. That's a good test question. I like this one. It's a little bit harder. <clears throat> it's not as easy as the other ones. I mean, that one's good too, but this one's a little bit better. It's not as nasty. Last one's kind of tricky. Yeah, what do you have to do for that last derivative? Product rule. Yeah, product rule. I'm going to refresh your memory on the product rule, right? So if you have, if you have FG, I don't know how you all do it, but it's... The derivative of the first one times the second one. Plus the first one times. Yeah, very good. The derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And the quotient rule, just since we're here, the quotient rule, derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom one squared. Some people do it differently. I do it this way because it matches. Look, f prime g, f g prime, f prime g, f g prime. It's the same. This is how I learned it. Uh, when I took calculus. So. so we'll have to use that on this piece here. Right? This will be maybe this will be our f, this will be our g first and second. So we'll use it on that piece. First one's easy. Yeah, it's the chain rule, right? Because it's the derivative of e to the t is e to the t. So it's e to the negative t times the derivative of the inside. I'll show the step. So it'll be e to the negative t times negative one. Which is just negative e to the negative t. But I wanted to show the extra step because I'm going to have to simplify the end anyways, I think. What's the derivative of 4? Zero. So OJ, like the orange juice or the comedian. OJ. And he was a comedian in the 80s. Yeah, he was an actor mm -hmm. and a football player. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. What's the derivative of e to the t? e to the t. So let me go over that again. I'm not done writing, but the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first derivative of the second. And then parentheses, parentheses, k hat. Oh, I didn't need to, well, I guess I could get rid of the O next to the J. OJ also means orange juice. <laughs> right, right. It means a lot of stuff, right? So I know those, those, those hats. Every time I see the IJK, I always expel stuff with them. Like you put it next to a number and it spells something. OK, OJ. Let's do component form just because it's fun. What's, what's the second component? Zero. Zero, yeah. And then we have that last one. You could factor something out, but I'm not going to. I just, I'm just going to leave it. Nice problem. I like this problem. I like it because it's short and easy. And it's like, do you know the product rule? Um, although you'll be taking plenty of derivatives next time when we do 12.4 and 12.5. I mean, we'll be doing a tangent and normal vectors and stuff. And like, yeah, doing a lot of cross products and stuff like that. So a lot less homework in those sections. Any, anything unclear at all? Any questions? Any questions? Mm -hmm. This one? Yeah, so the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So here it's e to the negative t times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of negative t is negative 1. So like if you had e to the 2t and you took that derivative, it'd be e to the 2t times 2. That's all. When you integrate it, that's when you divide by the number. Right? If you're integrating e to the 2t, you divide by it. Like when you're using like tabular integration or something like that. Um, yeah, there's some so there's some formulas. Uh, that we should talk about. So let's let's uh, talk about them. And there's a definition too. Let's talk about that first. So there's this notion of a smooth uh, function. So let's talk about that. Smooth.
smooth, smooth. I know, smooth. I was thinking like Michael Jackson. That song, smooth criminal. Definition. You see these in Calc 2, so if you remember, you, might, you may have done this in Calc 2, maybe, maybe not. It depends. So a vector valued function, valued function is smooth. So it's smooth. Smooth basically means intuitively that when you graph it, it has no sharp edges or cusps, and it has no sharp turns in orientation. Uh, for us, the interval is going to be all real numbers, so we're not going to have sharp turns in orientation, but is smooth on i. So i is an interval. So a vector valued function will be smooth on an interval i uh, if, if, um, I can't read my handwriting. Uh, if f prime, g prime, and h prime, these will be the components, okay, f, g, h, are all continuous. Continuous on i. And our vector valued function is not equal to the zero vector, okay, for any t and i. So I'm going to pause here and I'm gonna, we're going to talk about this t and i. I'm going to let you catch up and we're going to talk about it. Because on your test you'll probably have, you'll probably have a question related to this. So if you look up the definition of smooth on the internet, like if you Google smooth function, um, you might get different definitions. Uh, this is something that comes up in something called differential geometry, and, and they use slightly different, slightly different uh, de definitions. So, so for something not to be smooth, either the components have to not be continuous, or this has to be equal to zero. So if this is equal to zero, that means all of the components are zero, right? Because think about it. So note, if r prime of t is equal to zero, it's not smooth, right? It's not smooth. And that would mean that um, r prime of t would be f prime of t, g prime of t, h prime of t, assuming that r is fgh equal to zero, zero, zero. So this is the opposite of smooth. So note, so note, if the vector valued function is equal to zero, that means all of the components must be zero. So basically, on the homework, it will say, find the intervals where the function is smooth. So you have to find out where it's not smooth. So all you do in all of the problems is you take all of the derivatives and you set them all equal to zero. Okay, because you're looking for where it's not smooth. So basically, in every problem where it says, find where it's smooth, you just, you just take all of the derivatives and set them equal to zero. And then you find out where it's not smooth. And then you draw that little picture. So like, say you get t equals two, then you do this, and then it's smooth here and here, and it's not smooth here. So you just find out the value, you find, you solve for t. Let's do a problem right now so you see. So, so you, we mm -hmm. each component to zero. Yeah, let's just do it right now so you see. Um, I think there's, a, there's only a few in the homework. Where is it? Um, mm -hmm. I think so. Why not? I think it's good. I hope so. Uh, I think one semester I forgot. Let's try number 11. Let's try 11. Let's do a couple. Huh? Yeah, it's easy. It's easy and, and it's, well, it's easy, Rafael, but like, you have to know how to do it. So, um, I think sometimes people forget. Like every once in a while someone will leave this blank, but, um, so r of t is equal to Thank you. <clears throat> and the question says, find the open intervals on which the curve given by the vector valued function is smooth. So, so where is it smooth? Where is it smooth? I remember the first time I taught Calc 2. I saw this in the book. I was really excited. I'm like, oh, we can talk about smooth functions. Yeah. I actually taught Calc 2 before Calc 1. Kind of weird. So <clears throat> we're looking for where it's smooth. So the first thing you want to do is find out where it's not smooth. Instead of calling them f and g and h, you know, you can replace this with, with, with x prime of t, y prime of t, 
z prime of t, right? You, you can do that, right? Replace this with x prime, y prime. You could do that. You don't have to use f, g, and h. You can use x, y, and z. I feel like it's more intuitive because we were using x and y before. So let's, let's continue with, with that trend. So let's go identify our x. So this is our x. And then this would be our y. And then we have to, so, if you, so now we take the derivatives. So x prime would be um, 4t, 4 times t. y prime would be 18t squared. So these are continuous, they're polynomials. So we're trying to find out where it's not smooth. So what do we do? We set them both equal to what? Zero. Zero. So on this question, if you see this on a test, just take the derivatives, set them both equal to, they have to be zero at the same time, okay? So both of these, this is like a system of equations. So they both, hey, they both have to be zero at the same time, right? Identically zero. So this is gonna be zero whenever t is zero, right? So you, set, so you take the derivatives, call it x, call it y, set them both equal to zero. So this means that t is equal to zero. And this also means that what? t is equal to zero. So it's not smooth. at t equals zero. That's where it's not smooth. I'll pause and let you catch up. I'm gonna look at the homework to see if there's harder ones. Can the answer be an interval? The answer will be an interval. Very good, Rafael. So, yes, there's an interval, because we're looking for where it is smooth. Good. So it's everywhere except zero. So I think the question says find the open intervals. So I think it wants both intervals. I don't think it wants the union. I think it wants this. Okay, and I'm, I'm being picky here because here's the thing, if you, if you write this down, this is going to sound really picky, but it's math, it has to be right, I guess. I mean, it doesn't have to be right, it can be wrong, but it's bad to be wrong. Technically, this would be an incorrect answer because it says it wants the answer to be an interval. This is not an interval. Have we talked about this in this class? Inter we did? No? Did we? This is not an interval. Do you all know what an interval is? So if this is an interval, if I pick a value of x and I pick a value of y, for this to be an interval, every number between these two numbers has to be there. So for a set to be an interval, given any numbers in that set, every number between those numbers has to be in that set. So this is not an interval, because if I pick negative one here and I pick one here, what number is not in this set? Zero, so this is not an interval. So the homework might mark this wrong. I hope it does, uh, but it might not. Um, so this would be the correct answer, because it wants an interval. Intervals are connected sets, so this is not considered an interval. It's missing zero, right? Right. So, so right because every number has to be there. Because if I do this, here's zero. I can pick negative one and one. Oh look, pff, fail. Zero is not there, right? Zero has to be there. So that's the definition of an interval. Is that what the parentheses and the brackets are for when it's included and when it isn't? That's what that means, right? But just in, in mathematics, interval means everything has to be there. Okay. Yeah, everything between. So the definition of an interval is, an interval is a set where given any two numbers in that set, every number between them is also in that set. That's not in the book, believe it or not. Weird, right? <clears throat> so that's, that would be the answer. We should do another one. Why not? I kind of want to. I don't know. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Yeah, you want? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. How about, um, okay. Mm -hmm. Different values for T. Both of those values are not going to be smooth? No, you have to get the same answer for both. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, they're, they're not that hard in the homework, unfortunately. Let's try number 12. I mean, I, I was hoping for some harder ones, but it's okay. I guess you already did this in Calc 2, right? So, In Calc 2, you, have the, you had trig ones. You had like trig functions here and stuff. So 7t to the 7th, I had... How did you know I needed the other piece? Did you see me look? <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. <laughs> Do you all want to try this one? Yeah. yeah, try it. Take your time. Take your time. I was going to run out and wash my apple, but I don't think I have time. It's too far. Do I? No. Oh, wait, so, oh you want to go on break soon? Are you tired? Uh -huh. You're tired? It's only 7. We, we class doesn't get out until 11, right? Uh -huh. so, no, no, I'm kidding. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
we're almost done. Like, I mean, yeah, maybe we'll go on break soon. Yeah, sure. Maybe maybe finish this section and break. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, the next section only has a few homework problems, but like there's some theory. Next section won't take us long. I'm just gonna like give you the information and just jump into it right away. Oh, the question is find the intervals where the function is smooth. Right. I think it's the same answer. It's the same answer. Yeah, it's just, I, I know, it's the same answer. There's no plus signs. There's nothing's going to add or subtract. I know, so I'll, so I'll do it. So this, this is x. I know, you need trick functions to make it interesting. So this is, yeah, and y. So x equals, I know, this is it's easy. I know, it's really easy. y equals, but you need something easy in life. Life is hard. People drive crazy. I mean, it's, so x, x prime. Um, your y should be a z, I think. Oh, well, oh, oh, but it's just a dummy variable, right? So it doesn't matter. I mean, I mean, I mean, it could be anything, right? It counts. It counts. <laughs> Should have gone on break. Oh, oh. <laughs> She's right. No, I, it's a good. Thank you. I don't think it is because it doesn't matter. It's a dummy. It doesn't matter. That's all right. All right. So whole whole class. Did you do the whole class? Yeah. Yeah. Just the whole class. All. All right. All. Three So x prime. Can you change the y? I mean, I did. No, the other y. What y? Oh! 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 Jeez! I'm sorry. No, that is, no, 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 that's part of the same mistake. All right, 7 times 7 is 49, t to the 6, z prime, sounds like a drug. <laughs> it's going to cure the coronavirus. No, 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 <laughs> negative 9t, yeah, that's like that movie, World War Z, you ever see that? Yeah. Oh, I love zombie movies, it's so scary. They said them both equal to zero. I don't know if it makes any difference, but... Should you add y equals zero or anything? No. No, no. we're not. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I did the whole problem wrong. What? what? I did the whole problem wrong. Why? Double points. I did the whole, I did the whole problem wrong because, wow. because technically, he's right. Plus. I'm supposed to have, I mean, it doesn't matter because it's going to be zero anyways. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, but technically, I'm supposed to have a y here, right? And y is equal to zero. And y prime is equal to zero. Well, I'm not, I'm not, now that I messed up, there's no way I'm putting it on the test. Right? So, so, but I would let it go. I, who said that, by the way? Who caught that? They're very good, Rafael. I'm so proud of you. OK, so let's finish this. So you get t equals 0, t equals 0. Because you're supposed to have that there, right? There is a 0, there is a zero j hat there, right? I mean, technically, technically, the problem looks like this. Let me write it like this. It's a little more clear. Go, oh, wow, wow, falling, falling apart. So technically, this is why I should have looked at the homework before class. So this is x, this is y, this is z. So you're supposed to take each of them, right? So I'll do it again over here. So you do this, you do this, and then you do this, right? And then you take all the derivatives. So 49t to the sixth, 0, Negative 9t to the 8th, 0. And then so you get 0, 0, and that's always true. So you just get 0. OK, so it's just like before. Yeah, thank you, Rafael. Yeah. It would have mattered. Like, if there, was, if, there was like a two, if there was like a 2t j hat here, then you would just get 2 for the derivative. And that would never be true, and, there would, and yeah, it would, never, it would always be smooth in that case. <clears throat> so then it would be negative infinity to 0, and the other answer would be 0 to infinity. Thank you, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I should give you, do I want more points for that? I feel like that's kind of, okay, all right. Yeah, four. All right, it's fine. It's fine. It's all right. It's whatever. It's good. It's the first thing. <laughs> what? It's all right. I'm, not, I'm starting now. That's it. Like, huh? Yeah, they are. They are. They are. 
All right, a couple more things. I know you want to break. Can we finish this section before we break? We can finish it. All right. There's some properties. Okay, there's some properties. These properties are really important. So the whole class has four points. Good. It's good. It's good. You might need them. <laughs> so properties. Some of these are important. Some of them are not. But I'm gonna write them all down and these kind of come up in the homework. There's like number 14 looks ridiculous. Like they want us to use these properties. Honestly, it's easier if you don't use the properties. So in some cases, so. <laughs> Sometimes. Like I think you should just do the problem the easiest way you think. So if you have a number times a vector valued function. Hey, oh I love the shoes. Wow. Awesome. I should get shoes like, where'd you get those at? I can tell you. No, huh? I can tell you. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Um, they can't hear it. Some years ago. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> I'll tell you after. Yeah, 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 you can talk. It's okay. No one watches this anyways. All right, so, and they can't hear your voice barely. So, this is very few. Not on these. Um, so this is just C, R prime. That's it. So the number hangs out. That's the first property. C is a constant. C is a constant. Yeah. So, because it, it's just C is a constant. So C is a constant. C constant. C equal constant. Oh, you're welcome. It's important. I was lazy and I didn't write it down because I was lazy. If you have the derivative with respect to T of R of T, which is a vector valued function, plus or minus U of T, which is a vector valued function, then you just take the derivative of each vector value function. So it would be r prime plus or minus u prime. Plus or minus u prime. So, so just regular basic properties. This next one's kind of weird and it's worth seeing. Um, maybe, maybe up here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write something up here. So w, just for emphasis, is real valued just so I don't have to write it again. So w is going to be a regular function like 3t, 4t, 5t, 8t squared, e to the t. It's going to magically appear here. So if you have d dt, are you in the uh, Calc 1 class? Uh, I'll oh, cool, cool, cool. They still have class? What are you, what are you doing today? Curvature? No, next time is curvature. Yeah, today we're going to finish this. I'm going to do a little proof at the end of this, and then we'll do like one problem and take a break, and then we're just going to do a velocity acceleration. Probably like two problems. It's, yeah, it's not bad. So uh, if you have W of t, yeah, the next section is not so bad. W of t times R of t. Why is there no arrow on W? Because it's a real value function. Yeah, right? So, so there's a product rule. Don't use it. Okay, it's not worth it, but I'll write it down. It's easier if you just multiply and take the derivative in the homework. And we'll do an example today. So it's just like before. It's the derivative of the first times the second. Because it's a scalar, so you're able, to, you're able to multiply the number times the vector plus the first times the derivative of the second. So it, there is a product rule uh, whenever you have a real valued function times a vector valued function. I guess stuff like this would come up in proofs. That's maybe that's where it's more beneficial, but like for practicality, like it's just so much easier to, to do it without this. And you'll see when we do an example how, how, what I mean by how, much, how it's easier. Four. Four. Um, if you take the dot product, the derivative of a dot product, this is kind of interesting. So r of t dot u of t. So the derivative of the dot product, okay, is uh, the product rule, just like before. The derivative of the first, and then um, dotted with the second. Right, you can't multiply vectors, right? You have to either dot them or cross them. Right, the derivative of, uh, of the first, dotted with the second, plus the first, I was thinking about something else, dotted with the second. I can't zone out. So it'd be the derivative of the first dot the second, Plus the. F oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That I'm. That, no, no, no. So derivative of the first times the second plus. No one said anything, so. I mean, yeah, but it's just. You said you wouldn't make any more mistakes, and clearly that's not true. Damn! <laughs> 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 I 
did not mean for that to sound that harsh, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad it did, Michael. No, no, it's good. So, everyone okay with that? Now, I'd give you all the point, but I, no one said anything. So, it's the derivative of the first, dot the second, plus the first. I mean, I would. It's not me. It's the rules. So, there's the, <laughs> so the four. <laughs> so, it's kind of weird, right? There's a, there's, a, there's a formula for this. It seems like more work to do this, though. Like, it's just easier just to take the dot product and take the derivative. It doesn't seem like it's worth using the formula. Yeah, no, 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 no. Not at all, right? Like, it's, it's right, so that's what we're going to do later. Um, and then DDT. So why are we writing? Because you're supposed to learn. You're supposed to learn stuff. You're supposed to learn stuff. Yeah, you learn stuff, man. Yeah, you learn. Cross! Game over. Yeah, it's college. You're supposed to, like, it's Calc 3, like. <clears throat> So if you take the derivative of a cross product, it's the derivative of the first cross the second, right, plus the first <laughs> cross the derivative of the second. Ah, it's a lot of notation. It's the it's, you know, it's just a lot of, and then you have the arrow and the R, the R. I mean, that's ridiculous. It's R, and then it's, it's like a bunch of strokes, you know. It's, it's probably easier just to do the cross product and then take the derivative. Absolutely, Michael. Totally. And it's just easier to do the cross product and then take the derivative, right? You don't want to go through all that. It's just not worth it. So it's just not worth it. But why are we doing it? I don't know. It's just good, good to see it. Um, two more, and then we're done. And we'll do some problems. If you have the derivative with respect to T of... A vector valued function evaluated at a real valued function. There's a chain rule, right? There's a chain rule. So it'd be it'd be r prime of t, uh, r, r prime of w of t. Just stick to my notes. A lot of notation here. Okay, and then times uh, r prime w prime of t. So it's the derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside times the derivative of the inside. It's the chain rule from from calculus. Uh, the last one is actually the most important one, which we will use, and it's important for understanding the derivations because we're, we're going to derive um, some of the formulas next time, or at least some of the conceptual ideas. Um, so it's seven. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's useful now. It seems pretty irrelevant. It's like, why would we use this? But it will help us understand some stuff later. So if you take a vector-valued function and you dot it with itself and the result is constant, then... So then, the vector-valued function dotted with its derivative is equal to the number 0. So again, so if you dot a vector-valued function with itself and it's constant, then the vector-valued function is perpendicular to its derivative. So this is going to have some applications uh, in certain types of physics problems that we'll do later. Okay, so um, we'll use this later. But uh, just, just a random prop, the random one uh, to throw in, to throw in. The proof is not hard. I, I, I went through the proof sketch here in my notes apparently uh, a while ago. So, um, do you all want to see the proof or, or no? It's up to you. Huh? I, I think you good? I know you probably want to break, right? Okay. Well, so, that and like proofs are almost so. Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Harsh, Michael! <laughs> and then want to see the proof? Anyone want to see it really quick? Yes. Yeah, oh, let's do it. Someone raise their hand. Someone. Oh, yeah, good, good. Proof sketch. Too bad, Michael. <laughs> I'm putting it in quotes because it's a proof sketch. I'm not going to be really formal. Okay, just rough. You'll understand it, Michael. You're smart. You're, you're really good. You were the first one done, and you got a good grade. So, um, sorry. Sorry. Okay, so, <laughs> but you did. Yeah. No, I think you were the first one done, so he was. So we'll start by letting r of t be equal to a vector-valued function. And you did really good. So this will be x of t, y of t, z of t. And to prove this, this is an if-then statement. So in mathematics, to prove an if-then statement, you assume the if part, and then you show what's after the then. So you, get, you assume this. And then you show this is true. So you get to assume this. That's how it works in math. To prove anything in math, if it's if p then q, you assume p and you prove q. And you're done. That's a proof. So we get to assume this. So, so, and suppose, that means suppose, suppose that the dot product um, 
Uh, what is it? The dot product is equal to zero? Yeah. Uh, no, it's constant. This will be fun. I'm, gonna put, put my, I'm not going to look at my notes. I'm going to cheat. Oh, risk it. Points on the edge. Ooh. Okay, what do we have? Okay, what do we have to show? Okay, so now what do we do? We have to show this is true, right? So what can we possibly do? Well, I guess we can just compute the dot product, right? So let's do that. So when we dot it with itself, is it going to be? It's going to be this times this plus this times this plus this times this. Everyone see why? You all see it? Why? You do? You really do? I'll write it down. So it's x of t, just in case. I believe you, but maybe not. So let's see. Ah. Uh. That's what we have, right? That's what we have. So how are we going to finish? I have no idea. Well, I do have some idea, but a lot of times in proofs, you're just like blind. You don't know what's going on. You're just like writing stuff down, hoping that it works. That's how it is in math sometimes. Then you, so it'll be this times this. When you multiply these, you just get x of t squared, right? Plus y of t squared plus z of t squared equals c. So we're, we're allowed to write all this down because we basically just wrote this down. That's our assumption. And we manipulated it. I think at this point, we need to really stop and think about what we're trying to do. We're trying to show that the dot product of r with its derivative is equal to 0. But I have an idea. Does anyone have an idea? How can we get a derivative? What should we do to this, maybe? Take the derivative. So let's differentiate this bad boy. So it'd be 2 x of t times x prime of t. Yeah, that's the chain rule, right? You bring down the 2, subtract 1, take the derivative of the inside. This is beautiful. Plus 2 y of t, y prime of t, plus 2, it's fun to do Calc 3 proofs, z prime of t. And this is equal to, what's the derivative of c? Zero. zero. Oh, look at that. Look at that. We're, we're almost there. Look, it magically happens. That's the beautiful thing about proofs is you know they're correct. So like when you prove it, you'll know. And look, if you divide by 2, divide by 2, we get x of t, x prime of t. Let me come up here. Let me come up here. We're running out of room. The key point is coming up. So dividing by 2, we would get x of t x prime of t plus y of t y prime of t plus z of t z prime of t and that's equal to zero. But now the proof is pretty much done, right? Because this is the same thing as the dot product of this vector with the derivative vector. But this is r of t. And this, what is this one called? R, r. r prime of t. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that amazing? And that completes the proof. So you use a symbol to finish the proof. Cool, right? Isn't that cool? It's awesome, right? That's, that's math. Yeah, that, that's like, there's some classes where the whole course is this. They're really fun, but they're also really hard because like, you know, you take the test and like you have to do this and you've never done it before. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> so, does that make sense, Michael? I just pick it. Really? Oh, see, it's not that bad. It's good. It's good. No, I know. That's <laughs> good. No, it's good. It's good. It's good. No, it's good. Better make sense. Did it make sense? Did that make sense? Went through it kind of fast, but just, to, just so you see it. This is an important one because we're going to use it later. I know it seems like really like offbeat from the other ones. Like, what, what the heck does that have to do with anything? We're going to come back to it later. Don't worry. So we're actually going to use this to justify something key uh, later on in the course. Let's do one homework problem, or two, two, two homework problems, and then uh, we'll take a break. There's some here with the cross product and stuff and the dot product. Um, let's just do number, I don't want to do it, so we should probably do it. Number 14. <laughs> Let's do it. 14. So 14 is like a multiple part question. So we have r of t equals... It died. Oh no! Okay. 
Uh, anyone else have a computer that's not dead? Like that? Like that? Thanks. Thanks, Urash. Thanks. Okay. So, take your time. We'll go through this one carefully. I want to do one more after this, then we'll take a break, I promise. I promise. Because I want to do an integral after this, like a hard one. So, I know it's a lot. We did a lot of examples today. I think that's why it's, it seems so, so much. So, like the first part, like part A, we don't have to do the whole question, but like part A wants just the derivative, so we could do that, I guess. That's pretty easy, right? The derivative. Oh, separate ones? Yeah. yeah, it's like A, B, C, D. It's long. That's a really long question. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. You know, if you like, you know what we can do? I looked at you, Rafael, and I thought of this. Then before we do the problem, what's a better form to write it in, maybe? Component form. Yeah, let's do that. So this is T. It just makes it easier. 4T uh, 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 T squared, right? How is that T? I, I'm not taking the derivative. derivative. You know what? I did, I just, yeah. I did it too. Oh, I almost wrote 2t. I almost lost more points there because I'm hungry. So we need a break. 4t. I have two apples. I'm going to eat those. Two keep. Two cute. I hate fruit. So. <laughs> don't like I just don't have time to eat it usually. So. All right. Because you got to wash it. So it's like, ah, see, it's, it takes an extra step. All right. So let's see. The derivative of t is one. Uno. Dos. <laughs> the derivative of 4t is four. And then the derivative of t squared is 2t. 2t. That's it. That was nice, right? This is kind of fun. That wasn't so bad. It's so much easier in component form. You don't have to write the i hat, j hat, and k hat. Does that make sense? Okay. What's your name, by the way? Kyle. Kyle. Okay. Really? Okay. B. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I, thought, I thought your name was Jeff or something. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> DDT. <laughs> so this is uh, two. Oh, this is not bad. Two R of T minus U of T. You have to take the derivative. Yeah, I guess. I guess we do. Um, well, I just took it. I was, I was, that's why I was there. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to take it just for convenience, like do it over here, so yeah, we can I'll use do it. it real quick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it really quick. That's I a, thought that was gonna be B. So. Yeah. Okay. Let's just do it. <laughs> I, like, I like your method. I like your style. Two T. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Why not? Because that way we can just plug it in here, right? We just. So this means that this is, this is going to be two R prime minus U prime. You just take, you just take, there's a bunch of ways to do it, by the way. You could have like subtracted it first and then done it. I mean, there's a million ways to do it. Uh, lots of ways to show the work. And then, so let's see. So two R prime, you can distribute the two here, right, into the, into the, into the R prime. So it'll be two, so it'll be two, eight, four T. And I'm really happy that we did this. Uh, so, oh, 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 minus 4, 2t, 3t squared. This is equal to, now we actually just subtract, perform a subtraction. So this will be 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Negative two. And, th and then just 8 minus 2t? That's, that's all it is, right? Weird. And then 4t minus 3t squared? That's right. Weird. I, have, I don't think I've done this problem, like, maybe, I mean, it's been a long time. So, so that's that one. We should definitely do the other parts. They're pretty easy. So C. C. That was hmm? That was yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, this homework is pretty, this, some of these are a little bit weird. There was a lot more, but I deleted a lot of it. C is 3t times u of t. So it's the derivative of 3t. I think maybe I've never done this problem in class. Like, this seems really foreign. 3T. Yeah, 3t. Isn't that weird? 
yeah, so I don't think I've ever done this. Like, I usually just like, oh, you'll figure it out, and like people will just do it, I guess. But <laughs> so I guess we have to distribute the three t first. That might be better. I mean, we can use the product rule, but that's no fun. Let's let's distribute it first. So d d t, continuing with our Leibniz notation, would be three t. Well, I guess we can we can skip a step, or we can show the step. Um, basically, we're going to multiply this by three t. So I'll skip the step. So 3t times 4t is 12t squared. squared. So I'm going to put it in a bracket like this, 12t squared. OK. We're doing 3t times u, so, so 12t squared. And 3t times t squared is 3t cubed. Thank you. It's hard. It's hard. It's late. And then 3t times t cubed is 3t to the fourth, right? Right, 3t to the fourth, is that right? Everyone with me still? So multiplying this by 3t. So 3t times 4t is 12t squared. 3t times t squared is 3t cubed. 3t times t cubed is 3t to the fourth. I should have just shown the step. It would have been easier. Look, I'll show it up here. So I think it would have been a lot easier mentally to just do this. Now you can clearly see should have just done this. It would have been easier for my mind. Boom. Easier, yeah. Way, way better to show it than skip it. Like, so much mental math past 7. No, it's not 7.30 yet. <laughs> I usually go to bed around like 8. Yeah. Like on a normal day, like when I'm not here. 8.30. Last night I went to bed at, no, I think it was almost 9. Huh? Man, on weekends too, Saturday night, 9 o'clock, I'm out. Like, yeah, yeah. Sun goes down, I go down. All right, so, 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 so yeah, I can usually, I, yeah, I get really tired. I, I sleep a lot. So this is um, 24t, 24t, 9t squared, right, 9t squared, and then 12t cubed. That's it. That's part C. Part C. Part D and part E. Um, so part D wants you to find the dot product and take the derivative. You think you could do that one on your own? So basically, and there's one that ha you have to find the cross product. You think you know how to do that or should I do it? You can do it. So basically you find the cross product, you'll get a bunch of stuff with T's, and then you take the derivative. So can I leave it to you, that one? Okay. Let's do something else then. Um, you sure you got it? All right, we'll be doing it next time anyways, the cross product stuff. Let's do a simple integral, like a really easy one, and then I want to do a hard one. So 17, really easy. 17. Do a really easy one, then we'll do a harder one. <clears throat> so we have the integral of, anyone, any, uh, who rush? Do you have it? Yeah. What is it? The integral of 2t I have plus j like this? Thank you. Okay, perfect. So basically what happens here, let me uh, explain this. So let me just come to the side here. I've never explained this before, so I don't know why I'm doing it now, but I guess it's a new decade. So like if you were just going to integrate this piece here, 2t, you would get t squared, because it would be 2t squared over 2, right? And then you have a constant. So you, don't, so you would do like, if you have 2t i hat dt, you would get 2t squared over 2 plus c, and then you have the i hat. So the i hat's kind of like a vector, right? You see that? You have the i hat. So you would get t squared plus c i hat. No one ever does this, but I'm doing it. I don't know why. So you would get that. You would get c i hat. Let me pause here. If you're writing that, that's what we're, it's not in the book. I don't think it is. So I'll pause here. So if you were just doing this, you would, do, you would get this. So if you integrated this one, you would get a C with the J hat. If you integrate this one, you get a C with the K hat. So you always get a C for each one of the You get a C for each one. So at the end, you're going to get a C with an I, a J, and a K. So you're going to get a vector C. You're going to get a full vector. So your C is a vector. So you don't actually do this. You just integrate each piece. At the very end, you add a C, but that C is a vector. In the next section, after the break, we're going to find that C. Um, so, solution. So, integrating this one, we know it's t squared, i hat. 
When you integrate 1, what do you get? T. T. Very good, Dane. T. TJ. Hat. Integrate 3, we get 3T. Three K hat. At the very end, we add our C. But what is our C? It's actually a what? A? C vector. It's a C vector. Yeah. And now you see why, right? Because each separate integration will give you one of the components of that vector. It's just worth seeing it. I've never, I've never shown anyone this. I don't know why. I never, like, I never, I don't know. I never thought about it. But, or maybe I don't remember doing it. Yeah. So <coughs> Would I write like two whole separate vectors? <sighs> yeah, you, 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 yes, you would do t squared t 3t plus c. Good, Emily. Okay. Good. Solid. All right, now we should do a definite integral. Because I think, uh, also, oh, oh, on number 19, I don't want to do it in class because it will take 30 minutes. So 19. Really briefly. So how long is it going to take us to do it? Huh? Well, it takes 30 minutes to do it in class. It's like five minutes if you know how to do it, but you might not know how to do it. We probably don't. <laughs> so so I'm, I, was, I was just going to give you the answer uh, uh, later on. Not now because I have to look it up. Or no, just use Wolfram. Yeah, do that. Um, that's even better. Wow, is that a cotangent? Wow, wow, cot. No joke. Cot T. This integral requires a technique um, that you need to know, I guess. Or you'll, I mean, if you're taking differential equations, you'll see it then, because I usually do it. Are they supposed to go with bi hat? No, that's supposed to be a. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just make sure. Oh. Yeah, that's that's uh, thanks. Uh, what's your name? Ian. Ian. Thanks, Ian. Yikes. I was being nice too. All right, so no, it's like I'll give you the points. I'll give it to you. Um, so anyone know how to integrate this one? There's no product rule. Integration by parts. Yes, good, Michael. How many times? How, how many, many times? times? I mean, um, can you look times. at it and just know? Twice. It's a looper. You basically you call it I. You use parts twice. Can you, can you use, use tabular? No. Because one, one of those goes zero. zero. Uh uh. You end up using parts twice. It's a looper. Um, if you've taken differential equations, you remember this one, Roger, from DE? I have to look it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure for anything you can do in differential from parts forward, you can also do tabular, and you just have to get it to match. It. Yeah, it's harder. It's harder. Yeah. This one's the worst, though. This is like seeking cubed. So basically, basically on this one, I'm not going to do it. I, I, I'm, but basically, the idea is, I'll just maybe able to refresh your memory. You call it I, then you use parts. And use parts twice, and it ends up showing up again. Then you have to add i to both sides. It's a really, it's a classic integral. Anyways, I'm gonna leave it to you. It won't be on your test. Don't worry about it. But just you can put it in Wolfram. If you're taking differential equations, no worries. It will be on your test maybe because it'll come up. We'll we'll do it in class. Okay. It's later. So, but just so if you get stuck on it, just Wolfram. Okay, just Wolfram. I normally I would do it. It's just the time. Yeah, it's just the time. It's just a time constraint. All right, so let's do. Uh, a definite integral. Uh, number 20, the answer is 0, by the way, because it's an odd integrand. So you can write that down if you want on number 20. We should probably do number 21 together. Let's do 21. 22 and 23 are, are tough, but we'll do them in the next section. So let's do 21. I'm going to erase this and do 21 here. So 21. So 21, I'm going to go really slow. So we'll take a break after this one. So we're going from 0 to pi over 3. This is, this is really easy to mess up. I don't want to lose points. And we have secant tangent. So secant t tangent t i hat. And then uh, tangent t j hat. Thank you. Two, okay. And then dt? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. We're going to go through this really, really uh, slowly. So this is, you'll probably have a definite one on your test. Um, one of these. Yeah, wow. And 22 and 23 are also good, but I think we'll, we'll I think in the next section we'll, we'll visit that. 
Yeah, we will. We will. We will. Okay. So I don't feel bad skipping those. So we'll, we'll break after this. So basically when you're doing this, um, you have to go really slow. Uh, just break it up like, like this. So this will be this will be the definite integral from 0 to pi over 3 of secant t tangent t uh, i hat. I hat like this. Okay, just break it up. And then the dt, I'm going to put the dt here. I'm going to put the dt here like this. Okay, and then I'm going to put the i hat on the outside like this to make it a little bit better. And then you do this one as well. So it would be uh, parentheses definite integral from 0 to pi over 3 tangent of t parentheses. I'll put the parentheses here for clarity. dt parentheses j hat. So you're, you're doing each one. Okay, you're doing each one. So um, you do each one. All right. At the end, you're going to get a number. So you're going to get a vector. Okay, you're going to get a vector. And then this one here, same thing. Um, this one would be uh, parentheses integral 0 to pi over 3. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to think ahead here. Um, to integrate this, there's three ways I know how to integrate this. Method 1, let u be sine. Method 2, let u be cosine. Method 3 is the hardest way, but it's really clever. There's an identity. Do you all remember this? Sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. Remember that? So this is actually sine 2t. That's just the fastest way to do it. That's why I figured let's do it that way. dt, and then this is k hat. Pause here. It's a lot of notation, right? It's a lot of notation. That's why I was messing up with the, with the cross and dots. I was, going, I was trying to go too fast. All the arrows and stuff. The notation in Calc 3 is really intense. It's really like notationally intensive, I think, Calc 3. Way more than like differential equations. It's like the notation's like, uh, it's like, it's a lot of notation. Okay, we have to integrate this. Are we okay with this, with this move here? This is just an identity from trig. What's a function whose derivative is secant tangent? Secant. Because we're integrating secant tangent, so we get secant. So this is equal to um, secant t. And we're going from 0 to pi over 3. And we still have the i hat here. So, so I guess if you want, you can put this in parentheses like this. And you can put the i hat here. Don't forget the i hat. Right? The i hat is, is uh, important. Um, to, to make it more clear, yeah, that's pretty clear. I mean, that's it's OK. You could use a double bracket, too. Like another way of writing it would have been a double bracket. I could have put a double bracket and just put the i hat here. So I could have done this just to make it more clear, maybe like this. Maybe like that. Maybe that looks better. I don't know. Whatever, whatever you like, as long as it's clear that the out, I hat is on the outside. As long as it's clear to you. Um, when you're integrating tangent, I, I, don't, I don't think we've talked about this. No, we haven't. So I don't know how you all do it, but I know the answer is this, plus c. And so the way I do it is I do it in my head. Tangent is sine over cosine. So your u is going to be cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So it's going to be. Mm -hmm. So you let u be cosine. The derivative is negative sine. So you put a negative here, you know, and then and then when you rewrite it, it went really fast. I wasn't going to do it. When you rewrite it, you get this. And that becomes negative ln absolute value of u plus c, and then your u is cosine. But you can do it in your head, right? At least the beginning part. So think of, okay, sine over cosine, u is cosine, derivative is negative sine, boom. So this is negative ln absolute value cosine. I don't actually work it out every time in my head. and I, I just work out parts of it. So like if it was cotangent, it's cosine over sine. So if it's cotangent, it'll be ln sine. It's a T. Yeah, it's a point. Yeah, what's your name? Evan. Evan. Very good, Evan. Good, so good work. Mm -hmm. This here? Yeah. Yeah, the derivative of secant is secant tangent. So we're going backwards. When we integrate secant tangent, we get secant. I know, right? 
So that's why I picked this one, not the other easy one. <laughs> I, know, so I, know what I did it on purpose. I picked like the hardest one, right? It's got a tangent in it. Like no one knows this. This is like one of those, unless you're like just finished Calc 2, or maybe you're in differential equations now and it's come up. Like you have to be really on top of it to know this stuff. And <clears throat> when you're integrating, what's a function? What, what, what do you get when you integrate sine? Negative cosine. So we have sine 2t. Um, I don't think we've talked about this in this class either, but you can just divide by the 2. Okay, you can just do that. So it would be plus negative 1 half cosine 2t. And we're going from 0 to pi over 3. And then it's k hat. Uh, why? You can make a u substitution. You can let u equal 2t. Whenever you're integrating a sign time, uh, and you have a number inside, you can just keep dividing by the number. So it's a, it's a common uh, thing. It's a lot of, this is like, we, we skipped a lot of work here. Like this is, this is really heavy. Like this requires like a lot of knowledge. So any questions, please ask. This is like really, I picked a really intense problem. Yeah. For that last one, mm -hmm. you don't have to use the identity. You could just say it's sine squared t when you integrate it. Because 2 goes up if you do chain rule backwards. Sorry. Right. So, oh, 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 like yeah. That's pretty hardcore. Yeah. Good. Why yeah. Negative? Hmm? Why yeah, yes. Uh, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So when you integrate sine, you have a negative cosine. Yep. 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 Sorry. You see, you're okay with the two? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess. Like, uh, mm -hmm. That always works. Mm -hmm. It's like if you're integrating, like if you're like, it's like if you're integrating e to the two x, right? You just divide by two. Same thing. It'll come from the u sub. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on this one? I know it's it's a big step up from the uh, previous integral. Hardcore. Can't you just leave it like that? No, we're not done. I'm just pausing for like a long time. Awkwardness. Is it the answer <laughs> to the number? <laughs> Yeah, yes, yes, it's going to be a vector. We should finish. Okay, I'll, I'll finish. Yeah, like, yeah, it's like walk out. I'm kidding. All right, so, <laughs> so, uh, so, which one do you plug in first, the pi over three or the zero? Pi, pi, over, three. pi over three. Minus secant of zero. So secant of pi over three minus secant of zero. <laughs> I had. No, I'm asking what she said. Like, are you just going to leave it like that? Like, it's just really funny. Like, yeah, just stop. <laughs> no, I know because I paused for a long time. Like, no, just, you know, really want to make sure you get it. I, I, I feel like it's a lot. Plug in the pi over 3, negative ln. Why would I laugh at how I say secant? All right, so pi over 3 <laughs> minus it become plus ln cosine of 1. Cosine of 0. Cosine of 0. I, I'll write it down. Uh, J hat, J hat. Sorry, sorry. It's all right, sorry. Right. No, no, it's okay, Wurash. Uh, no, no, no hard feelings. Uh, <laughs> plus, see me after class. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Cosine, just messing around. Two pi over three. It's a long problem. It's really easy to mess up. Plus or minus? Plus, plus one half cosine of zero. And then bracket k hat. Do you know why I put a one there, Urash? Because cosine zero is one. I did the same thing. Oh, you did? Oh, that's not fair. No, it's okay. It's all right. That's no, good. It's good. It's good. No, that's all right. I feel better now that you did the same thing, Urash. Makes you feel really good. No, I mean, <laughs> wow, what a mess. So secant is one over cosine. What's the cosine of pi over three? Is that, is that one half? No, it's the more complicated one. It's square root of three over two. No, sine, no, sine, it's one half. Because sine of pi over three is square root of three over two. I know because I memorized that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, so it's one half. So it's one over one half. So it's two. This is two. Dos. Two. Cosine. Uh, yeah. I got myself mixed up. You go to two pi over three. I know. Two times pi over three is two pi over three. Oh. Mm -hmm. What's your name? No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. Get <laughs> the points back. <laughs> From earlier, Dane! <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm kidding. Thank you. Do you see it, though? I do see it. I didn't notice it. No, no, it's okay. It's really easy. I know. Can Thank you. Go, you. Can mm -hmm. you go over that two again? Yeah. Which one? Yeah. Yes. 
So secant, here, I'll do it here. No, I'll write it out, totally. Secant of pi over three. No, it's good, it's good for you. Is one over cosine pi over three. And I memorized a long time ago. One over one over mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. Worth it. Zero. Yep. And then co secant of zero is one. Because it's one over cosine zero. Cosine zero is one, right? Yeah. Would that be two minus one? That'd be two minus one. Which is zero. No, I'm kidding. I had. <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible. I thought you meant the negative one. Really oh, huh? Yeah, yeah. It was on the test last semester, I think. The same problem with the same numbers. So almost everyone got it right. Because people study. You know, people people care. Like people care. What you would think about? Yeah, they do. They do, they really do. It's really plus. Um, right, cosine of pi over three is one half. What's the cosine of zero? One. So this is ln one. Ln one is zero. Plus. I know, it's a, it's a wreck. I probably won't, though. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't made the test. I would leave. Cosine of 2 pi over 3, it's not 1 half, but it's negative, negative 1 half because it's in quadrant 2. So, so this is negative 1 half, okay? So what's negative 1 half times negative 1 half? Negative positive 1 fourth. Right? Positive 1 fourth. Right? Because this is because, because this, this, this is... That's what happened there, right? Because that's negative one half. <laughs> Cosine of zero is one. K hat. I'm having a flashback. I did this problem once and we, we had like no time. I remember doing it. Like the cl like class was over. Like there was this guy who was really confused. I remember his face. <laughs> he was sitting over, he was like sitting right there. He was like shaking his head. He's like, I just don't get it. I'm like, oh. He's like really like having a hard time. Uh, I had it's a nice guy. Though. So, that's zero, right? This um, you can rewrite this or you can leave it. Um, check it out. Right? That's that's the property of logs. Ln of zero is one. A, a zero. Wow. All right, is that right? Yes. It is? It is right? I, I did it a different way at first, and I got Alan, too. Good! We're both good. It's good. Good. Uh, Tori. Tor <laughs> really? Tori? Yeah. One, one fourth plus one half. That's one fourth plus two fourths. So how many fourths is that? Three, Three fourths. What an awesome, ridiculous problem. Anyone like this problem? Yeah, yeah all right, Dane does. Good. <laughs> so, so, so good. 